call to order the November 11, 2024 meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's Policy Review Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through Microsoft Teams Live on the BCPS website. To conduct this meeting by virtual means, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Wash, Ms. Gover, or Ms. Howie if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Gover, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you. Ms. Frempong? Ms. Frampal? Present. Thank you. Ms. Harvey? Present. Ms. Hemp? Present. Ms. Stolesky? Present. Ms. Chikakalu? Present. Ms. Pumphrey? Present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gober. Please call the roll to determine which staff members are present in this meeting. Ms. Margaret Ann Howie? Here. Ms. Vicki Wash? Here. Ms. Mildred Charlie Green? Mr. Christopher Hartlove? Present. Mr. Terry Jones? Present. Mr. Douglas Handy? Present. Mr. Whitney Tantliff? Sorry, Mr. Whit Tantliff, thank you. Hi, here. Ms. Deanna Ashenfelter? Present. Mr. Winston Williams? Mr. Williams? You may have to unmute yourself, Mr. Williams. Are there any other additional staff members present that were not called? Thank you, Ms. Pumphrey. Thank you, Ms. Goover. First on our agenda is item B1, policy 3113 transfers and supplements. Policy 3113 is on the 2024 2025 review schedule. Mr. Hartlove and Mr. Tantliff, please proceed. I'm sure at the um, at this point, I believe I've reviewed the, the policy. We have not made any changes to the to the to the policy, so I don't know if there are any questions or uh, Mr. Tantliff. I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that. Nothing to add. Okay, um, committee members, is there any discussion or questions on the recommended? Well, there are no changes on policy 3113. Okay, seeing none, if there are no corrections and no objections, policy 3113 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hartlop and Mr. Tantliff. Next on our agenda is item B2, policy 3121, funds management and classification of expenditures. Policy 3121 is also on the 2024-2025 review schedule. Mr. Hartlove, please proceed. Uh, sure, thank you. Uh, this policy, uh, th there wasn't anything that was that substantive that was changed. We did uh, delete under standards um, B, the revenues that was uh, found to be it's also it's covered in a so that was found to be redundant so we uh, deleted out uh, we we're uh, proposing to delete out that uh, item b and then c becomes b and that is the those are the only i think there may also be oh no i think that's it that's the only change we have Thank you, Mr. Hartlove. Is there any discussion on the recommended changes to policy 3121? Okay, if there are no corrections and no objections, policy 3121 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Next on the agenda is item B3, policy 3123, fi financial reporting. Mr. Hartlove, if you, you and appropriate staff could please proceed. Uh, sure. 
This is our uh, financial reporting policy or uh, the board's financial reporting policy. We uh, nothing substantive. We did have uh, some commas that uh, uh, were, I believe, added. Uh, otherwise, we uh, no substantive changes. Thank you, Mr. Hartlove. Is there any discussion discussion on the recommended changes to policy 3123? OK, if there are no corrections and no objection, policy 21, excuse me, 3123 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Thank you, Mr. Hartlove. Next on our agenda is item B4, policy 3125 school activities fund, which is also on the 24-25 review schedule. Mr. Hartlove, if you and appropriate staff could please proceed. Um, sure, uh, this is our, our uh, the policy on uh, school activity funds. Uh, this is one where there were no substantive changes. We had, uh, I think, some commas that were added. Otherwise, I think that's it from a substantive uh, view point of view. Thank you. Is there any discussion on recommended changes to policy 3125? OK, if there are no corrections and no objections, policy 3125 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Excuse me, uh, Madam Chair, may yes, the fiscal staff be excused from the meeting, please? Yeah, yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our agenda is item B5, policy 0100 equity. Policy 0100 is on the 2024-25 review schedule. Policy 0100 was also before the committee in school year 23-24. On February 5th, 2024, the committee referred it, referred it to the equity committee for input. It is now back before us for consideration. Mr. Handy, please proceed. Thank you, Ms. Pumphrey. Uh, so Ms. Pumphrey gave some background on uh, this policy from last year. Uh, we are back from the equity committee with some proposed changes. Um, if you look at your policy analysis, there are actually 19 changes that are listed on the uh, policy analysis document. Along with each of the changes is the rationale for the changes. Uh, we also see the equity lens considerations that follow uh, those proposed changes. Uh, at this time, Ms. Pumphrey, um, if I may, I would, instead of reading all these changes, um, since the, you know, the document is there for committee members to review, um, I could take any uh, questions anyone has, or perhaps we could have some discussion if there's any of the proposed changes that uh, warrant the discussion. Yes, I think that's a wonderful idea. First, I'd just like to um, publicly thank the Equity Committee for their work on this. Um, many necessary changes, and I appreciate the hard work that was put into this to bring back to our committee. Um, and committee members, any discussion or questions on the changes? Ms. Pumphrey? Yes, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, I second your comments and would like to also extend my appreciation to the Equity Committee. Um, there's a, clearly a lot of work that went into the changes. Um, and I, I truly appreciate all the work and there's there's some great content here. Um, I submitted this afternoon some very minor um, edits to this. However, all of my um, edits preserve the changes that the equity committee made um, with the exception of some minor grammatical changes. So I, I did want the, the policy committee to know that um, I support the changes um, submitted to us by the Equity Committee um, and wholeheartedly will be voting in support of those. So thank you, Mr. Handy, um, and thank you to the Equity Committee. And Madam Chair, um, if you could let me know when would be um, the appropriate time to discuss um, the changes that I submitted, I'd like to present those for the committee's consideration. Ms. Hen, you may proceed since you um, started with your comment. Oh, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Um, colleagues, I, I sent a document out late around four o'clock. I do apologize for the late distribution of that. If anybody needs a copy, I can provide that to you electronically now um, of about nine um, largely copy edits to 
the version that was um, provided in board docs to the committee and I can go through those quickly now. If there are any questions, um, please feel free to stop me as we go through each of these. Like I said, most are minor grammatical or copy edits made um, to those. The first is on page one, one A on line eight. Um, this is a content um, edit that I pulled from a later section of the policy because I felt it's so powerful. And I'll read um, the, rev the revision. It's the first sentence of the policy. And I'd like to see it amended to read, the Board of Education of Baltimore County believes that each student in the school system can achieve and should receive an education that maximizes the student's potential to become a globally competitive graduate. So the edit is by adding the words can achieve and to that sentence. And that is repeated later in the policy. However, um, because that is so powerful, I feel that that should be contained in that first sentence in the policy statement. Um, and in looking at the other school districts policies that were provided as examples, um, that messaging is more prominent in their policies that originally I felt that it wasn't in our policy and it was only after a second or third read that I found it and I thought well that should really be more prominent so that's my first recommendation um, secondly on line um, 15 in the same paragraph I'll read the um, revision the full sentence reads, for success to occur for each student in lifelong learning and the world of work, the school system recognizes and values individual differences and removes institutional barriers and other obstacles to educational equity. So th this sentence is, is reworked slightly um, from the suggested, suggested revision. Um, which read and prioritizes educational equity by recognizing and removing institutional barriers and ensuring that social identifiers are not obstacles. Um, that read as passive to me. Um, so I tried to reword that in a way that uh, makes our commitment more active in terms of what are we actually going to do to prioritize educational equity. I'm sorry, educational equity. Um, we're going to recognize and value individual differences, and we're going to remove institutional barriers and obstacles to educate to achieve educational equity. So again, same concepts, but restructured the sentence to make it more active of a commitment than passive. Um, when I read the original sentence, it these are big ideas, but the messaging was lost, and it was a very passive way of saying it. So I tried to make it more active. Um, I can stop there if there are any questions or comments or keep going. Um, Madam Chair, if you'd like to open it up to the committee. Sure. Or if you'd like um, me to keep going. <laughs> sure, that's a good idea. We can stop here and see if any board member, um, excuse me, any committee members have any um, questions or discussion about those first few items. OK, Ms. Han, I don't see any additional discussion. You can proceed. OK, thank you, ma'am. Um, on the same page or I'm sorry, on page two, there's just a one word insert on line 23. It's my line 23. Hopefully it's it's yours as well. Um, adding the word may to the definition of cultural competence. Um, the ability to embrace the student as a whole person and to comprehend that the student's behaviors and mannerisms may stem from cultural practices or upbringing and not automatically seeing the student's actions as insubordinate or defiant. Um, so that that was just a one word insertion there. Um, no changes on page three. On page four. We um, define social identifiers um, beginning on lines um, on line one and through line five. One social identifier that we do not include that I believe may be timely to discuss and possibly include, and this is a type of social identifier, 
is political identity and expression. And so I've inserted um, political identity and expression as another social identifier, as a demographic factor, and have added that to the list of social identifiers. Excuse me, uh, Ms. Pumphrey, you do have a, a raised hand. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hen, let's stop there and let, sure. me see. let me see whose hand is raised. Ms. Harvey, do you have a question? Uh, yes, I apologize. I was unable to get my hand up when you first opened up the floor. Um, I I do have some thoughts about the proposed edits thus far, but now I wonder since we're already four pages in if we should just continue and I'll I'll hold my questions and thoughts until the end. Thank you. Okay, that sounds good. You may proceed, Ms. Hen. Okay, thank you. Um let's see, that was that. Same page on line 13 under um section 3a i'll read the the preceding sentence um in order to raise educational equity and excellence and to ensure access to rigorous educational opportunities that close achievement gaps among all student groups the schools the school system will and then a reads reflect a philosophy that social identifiers are assets and then I may need help with this one because I, I was unclear grammatically what the messaging this was trying to say. So I've um, struck the language that follows assets, that follows the semicolon, which actually is struck on this draft, that said that support, understand, respect, and appreciate culture, socioeconomic status, language, ethnicity, ability, and other differences. I'm, I'm not sure if this is redundant in that it repeats the list of social identifiers or if it's trying to state what those, those assets do. So as of now, my, rec my recommendation is that that language is struck because it's, it repeats the list of social identifiers um, above in I'm sorry, it's letter I, but I'm o I'm open to suggestions there, or we can leave it as is. And I'm looking for feedback there, and perhaps Mr. Handy um, could elaborate or add some some clarity to to that section. It's struck as of now because I I couldn't come up with something um, that would add clarity to it, and it seemed redundant. But I'm I'm open to suggestions, so I'll I'll keep going, and perhaps we can return to that um, item. The let's see, three C beginning on line twenty one. The last um, part: di direct the use of resources to provide equitable access to educational opportunities and relevant support services even when this means differentiating resource allocations is struck um, because we are um, striking the implementation information that I believe is being moved to the rule, which seem to apply here as well. So I'm not sure that this belongs in this statement under 3C, but this is another um, point that, that may need some clarity. Um, the rest are, are I'm more clear on. Page five, under letter E in line one, where it says use disaggregated data, I'm recommending we add and share disaggregate, use and share disaggregated data in a manner that shows disparities to make, sorry, there's a word that's repeated over this in the formatted, decisions on resources to include educational opportunities. The new letter F, provide multiple pathways to success for the diverse student body 
and actively encourage, support, and, and I'm suggesting inserting, communicate high expectations for academic achievement for each student. The original language um, written said high expectations for academic achievement for each student. So to make that um, active and we consistent with the rest of the language, um, I just added communicate high expectations for because if we're actively encouraging, supporting and um, to make that consistent with the rest of the language here, added um, the verb communicate high expectations for academic achievement on page five. And we're getting near the end. I promise we're, we're almost through. Um, on page six, letter J in section, I believe this is still section three. Eliminate the disproportionate overrepresentation of students identified. Um, the original language called for disciplinary referrals as well as suspensions and expulsions. I'm suggesting we um, change this to be consistent with Comar's focus, which is removals or suspensions and expulsions. Um, Comar's concern is um, that students stay in school, that we are not excluding um, students from school, um, and their focus or emphasis is on suspensions and expulsions. So to make our policy um, consistent with the Comar requirement that all school systems adopt a policy that addresses um, disproportionality in the discipline program, um, this has been edited to focus on disciplinary removals from the school program. And in parentheses, I've listed suspensions, expulsions to be clear that that is what our our focus is on identifying disproportionate overrepresentation. Um, we have other types of referrals. We have referrals for attendance. We have, um, while it does say disciplinary referrals, um, chronic absence, lateness, um, there are other types of referrals here. That's not the focus of Comar when they're talking about disproportionate impact of a disciplinary program. It really is on um, suspensions and expulsions, which is why I think this change is necessary um, to bring it in line with the state's focus. And I believe that was the last change. It is. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, committee members, for allowing me to bring you um, these changes. And with that, I'll, I'll turn it back to you, um, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Um, let's start, I believe, with two sections that um, I believe Ms. Hen requested Mr. Handy's um, clarification. Um, and if I'm incorrect about this, please step in. But I'm seeing that as page four under sections three commitment, um, line 13 to 16, and also lines 25 to 27. Yes, thank you. Okay, if we could have... Um, Mr. Handy's advice on that. And um, Mr. Handy, if you need some clarification, um, please just let us know. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Ms. Ann, for your, um, your, your edits, your feedback. So for that uh, first item that you mentioned uh, for my input, um, looking at 3A line 13. So the language that comes after, I'm checking my notes here, right? The language that comes after um, asset. I understand you uh, changed it plural to assets. That language that follows that was added uh, to support the term asset. So uh, essentially to describe the term in, in detail, um, so it wouldn't just be asset and then an, um, an assumption on what was meant by assets. Um, you did mention that it looks like some of what was there is uh, a repeat of social identifiers. So you notice it is, a, I guess, a shortened list, if you will. Um, in comparison to the social identifiers list, but it was made to really mirror those two. So we're saying that, again, those social identifiers are assets, and then we wanted to um, give some additional language um, in support of that term assets. So that was what the committee gave as far as their feedback uh, for that particular item. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Handy, for that, that clarification. Um, 
the the language seemed confusing to me so perhaps we do need a a minor edit so that it's clearer to our readers um what our our goal is in or if we're, if we're describing them i i understand the meaning but i want it to be clear to our readers that mm -hmm. this is why this is important. This is so important. And this is why I'm, you know, I'm glad we're spending the time to get this right, um, is what I'm I'm trying to say. And so that when we say that support, understand, respect, and appreciate, we do, I guess I'm struggling with, with the sentence structure and the grammar here, that we, we value these social identifiers and then we give examples of those, but is there a way that we can word this, that it's, it's clear what we're saying? Okay. Got you. So Ms. And just so I'm clear, right. So I guess the language that follows assets, just want to, this one I'm, I'm hearing you say, so you're in agreement with the language is the sentence structure, like grammatically we want to work with that, language but the the language itself or what it's the language itself you're okay with or the, the i think I, I i'm fine with the meaning i think the intended meaning of the language but it's it's not clear the way it's currently written what we're trying to say So the board, a, are we saying that the board supports, understands, respects and appreciates the school system? Well, I think in the sentence above, it does say the school system. So it says mm -hmm. the school system will, A, reflect a philosophy that social identifiers are an asset that support, understand, respect and appreciate cultural, social, and economic, you know, et cetera. Excuse me, uh, committee members have placed a suggestion in the chat for your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Howie. Thank you, Ms. Howie. Thank you. Okay. I do think I do think that language in the chat clarifies a bit. Agreed. Uh, uh, thoughts from other committee members regarding Ms. Howie's suggested language in the chat for this particular section. Ms. Seleski, I see your hand thank up. You. Yes, thank you. Um, I agree with the two of you that what Ms. Howie wrote seems a little bit more clear and direct. Okay. All right, so it sounds like we're in agreement, so I can take that language and uh, draft that into the latest revision uh, for the committee's review, and I'll make sure I um, uh, work with Ms. Howie to follow the correct process to get this back to you all. I don't know, and maybe I can ask now, Ms. Howie, I don't, does this require us to return to PRC? Is there, could, just want to get some guidance on so the committee, it. it's up to the committee as to whether or not they wish to see the policy again prior to sending it to first reader. Okay. I think probably what we're going to do is discuss, discuss and Ms. Howe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're going to discuss some of these additional changes recommended by Ms. Hen, see if any other committee members um, request any additional changes, and then we can go from there based upon um, those discussions to see if it will move forward as amended or um, if it needs to be returned for further um Further updates. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, OK, Thank I think we're it. fine with those sentences, those lines. So the next Mr. Handy would be lines 25 to 27. Yes. OK, so for those particular lines, uh, the feedback from Equity Committee was um, 
So what's after uh, the word excellence? Everything in parentheses was to be removed entirely. Um, so Ms. Ann, help me out. I just want to make sure I'm addressing what you asked. Um, so the feedback was changing the language in that particular uh, paragraph 3C um, to describe the support that would be provided to students um, based on their needs and to eliminate redundancy. So it was essentially edited um, to remove um, redundancy in the statement um, while also focusing on student needs. So that's why it was um, that last uh, section was removed. Thank you, Mr. Handy. So it, this could be an error in my editing then, but after excellence, um, you're saying that that language in lines 25 through 27 was removed at the recommendation? Correct. Okay. Correct. That's a, that's a then recommendation. Yes. Perfect. Okay. I agree with the committee's recommendation. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, okay. ma'am. And Ms. Hen, am I correct that, that were, those were the two and only um, only uh, areas where you requested input from staff? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So now um, we can open it up to committee members for your additional discussion regarding some of these changes proposed by Ms. Hen. And Ms. Harvey, I see that your hand is up. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, I, I'm a little, I, I do want some clarification on the, the reference we just made because I did not think that that section was removed. It, it looks like the removal was a recommendation by Ms. Hen in the brackets, but it remained in the policy and we added relevant support services. So I'm not clear on that. Uh, but overall, I, I believe that although these are just a handful of changes. I agree with Ms. Hen is that this is such an important policy that we need to get it right. And although it may be a word here or a word there, these words do make substantive changes uh, to this policy. And so it would be my preference that it, it be returned to the equity committee uh, for further review. And okay. If so I... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Thank you. I was just going to say, so you're right. I just want to be clear that you're recommending it goes back to um, the equity committee to specifically discuss the changes proposed by Ms. Hen at this point. Yes. OK. Um, any other discussion from committee members about Ms. Hen's changes? Oh, uh, recommend recommendations. Ms. Pumphrey. Yes, Ms. Hen. I'm I'm fine with Ms. Harvey's suggestion. I think that's a great idea and would welcome the equity committee's feedback on the changes. I I agree and I I would welcome their eyes on it. I I appreciate the work they've done so far and like Ms. Harvey said it's it's important and would would welcome their feedback. Thank you. So I, members of the committee um I would just suggest that uh if this committee wishes to recommend that there is additional review by the equity committee, that there is more direction given to the equity committee. For example, is it that the policy review committee wishes the equity committee, or is it that the policy committee review committee is recommending that these be considered and wants input, or that you simply want the equity committee to review the proposed changes? I'm not sure that sending them without some sort of frame is going to be helpful to the equity committee, but certainly Ms. Frempong would be able to speak to that. Ms. Hen, and then um, I would like to ask Ms. Frempong's opinion as far as sending this back to um, the equity committee. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. I, I defer to Ms. Frempong. I, I okay. was going to make the motion that we send the proposed changes plus any other changes that the committee would like to see made back to equity committee to review. That's all. Okay. Okay. Ms. Frempong. Can afternoon. you speak to what type of direction you think we, if we, if we're going to return this to um, the equity committee, what um, type of direction do you think we need to include as far as what we're requesting from the equity committee? 
So I think it is important just to note that there were some changes recommended by Ms. Hen so that uh, review those, propa those proposed changes um, and provide feedback on that as well as if there's any other type of um, changes that would be recommended by the equity committee. The equity committee, I think, is um, we have had some changes, I think, for this go around um, as compared to last time. So um, we would welcome, that's why I'm looking at the um, entire policy as we would at the past policy that's coming back to us as well. Thank you, Ms. Prempong. Um, so there, there are two things I, I think are important here. One, if there, if, you, if any of our committee members here at this, at the present moment have specific, um, specific issues with some of the, I know we want to return to equity committee, but if there's anything very specific that you don't agree with, with these changes, I think it may be helpful for the equity committee to be aware of those, um, or any specific, just to give them more direction when they're looking at at the changes. If anyone has any just anything they want to discuss specifically, um, and secondly, after that, I'd like to open it up for any additional changes, um, aside from Ms. Hen's changes, so that when it goes back to the equity committee, they have a final look at this with all of any additional changes, um, recommendations before bringing it back to us again another time. There were quite a, a number, a large number of changes, which I think is wonderful, and I think it's. Um, important that we're discussing all of these changes and making sure that we get this right because it's such an important policy. So I want to make sure that we're clear when we send it back to um, the equity committee it's so that they have the right direction. Um, so any any additional comments from committee members as far as first Ms. Hen's changes? Or recommended changes, I should say. Okay, I don't see any hands raised other than Ms. Hen's recommendations. Oh, go ahead, Ms. Hen. Um, thanks, Ms. Pumphrey. I just wanted to say I I brought these to the committee, but I I really want them to be the committee's recommendations moving forward and not my yes. recommendations. So yes. if yes. there are objections, concerns, you know, uh, changes, please bring them forward because these should be the committee's recommendations moving forward and not my recommendations. That's That's all. Thank you. Thank you. And I thank you for saying that because that's what I was trying to say, but you said it way more articulately. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> um, the one change that I'm questioning is the addition of political identity and expression under social identifiers. Um, I just I question if that fits there, if it's I know if it's a social identifier that shouldn't be included in this policy. Um, and I'm not so sure it fits there, so I, I I would like an assessment from the equity committee on that. Um, I think that's the only place where I have a, a a major that I would I would want more discussion on as far as the changes proposed here. Um, any other comments? May I comment on your yeah. comment? Or yes. okay, I see Ms. Zaleski has her hand up. I have the same um, question. It, it's something that seems timely and that um, I did a little bit of research on, but again, I, I really want the equity committee's feedback. I'd, I'd like staff's feedback on that. It, at, again, so at a very cursory level of research, it is a form of social identifier and one that is important to recognize in some shape or form, whether it belongs here. Like you said, I don't know. The answer to that. So I, I'm really curious as to what others think. And by including it and sending it to the equity committee, if that's what you know we we decide to do, then at least we get feedback on it. Right. Um so yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm okay. I'm curious. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lusky. Uh sorry. Thank you. Yes, I'm um, in the exact same thinking boat as both Ms. Hen and Ms. Pumphrey. Um, I know, obviously, I was a former social studies teacher, so my, that lens is kind of coming into my brain right now in terms of um, in terms of political identity. I know that, you know, cultural identity would include political, social, um, you know, and a multitude of other um, 
diversity factors. And I, I too, would really like sort of an expert's opinion or staff's opinion in terms of whether specifying political identity is um, possibly going to empower students to make verbal and, and physical choices in the schoolhouse that might um, create a divisiveness that you know, we we just might not want to um, amplify. But again, I I welcome the expertise of staff and and so forth. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tulski. Any other comments or discussion? Okay. And do aside from Ms. Hen's changes, do we have any other um, recommendations or questions um, before we move this forward, or before we? Um, invite a motion to move this forward to the equity committee. Ms. Hen. Sure, um, just one last comment on the political identity, and I, I thank Ms. Tulusky for her comments. Um, in reading our intent, you know, I really like the fact that this policy calls out social identities as an asset. I see um, our students' differences, including political identity, as being an asset and, and reframing our differences, particularly now, as assets, as bringing peace to an environment that should be a safe space. And whether, you know, we don't want to create an atmosphere of divisiveness, but at the same time, if we can create an atmosphere of peace, it, that identity exists. It's it's not, we're not in a position to suppress it and and that's, that's unrealistic to do so. But if we can say, this is part of who you are, we recognize it, it's part of our differences and we're going to embrace our differences and value our differences no matter who you identify as, that's part of who you are. And that's a very different way of, of framing it and shaping it. So again, I wanna get experts' opinions on it, but that's another way to look at this when we talk about including it as a social identity, because it is part of someone's identity and how we view it, it viewing it as an asset could be very powerful. Um, so I just wanted to share another perspective on that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Any other discussion items for this policy? Okay, so at this point, um, I believe we are going to invite a motion to return policy 0100 to the Equity Committee for further review based upon um, so, uh, Ms. Pumphrey, you need a yes. version to send back. So are okay. you sending back the version as amended by uh, Ms. Hen, or are you sending it back and then with it sending the uh, recommendations from Ms. Hen? Again, I, I think that what the Equity Committee deserves is clarity as to what they are reviewing. Okay, so any thoughts on that before I invite a motion? I would be inclined to invite a motion to send the original policy with Ms. Hen's recommendations, but we don't necessarily need to call them Ms. Hen's recommendations. We can call them recommendations from the committee. Um, Ms. Frempong, I see your hand was up first. Yes, thank you. I, I would ask that it gets sent to the equity committee as it was sent out per PRC and then with the recommendation suggest, suggested edits on the side. Thank you, Ms. Frumpong. Ms. Harvey? That was my recommendation as well. Okay, so we are. I'm going to invite a motion to um, return policy 0100 as presented to PRC, as well as recommenda recommended changes um, to the Equity Committee for further review. Ms. Hen, I see your hand up. I have a question about this yes. motion. The The version that was provided to the policy committee was the 
the version that came out of equity committee, was it not? Ms. Howie's shaking her head. It, Ms. Can Ms. That Howie? Is correct. My... That so is correct. What, thank you, ma'am. So what is the purpose of sending them back the policy that they've already seen and sent to us? Um, my my thought is to return it um, so that we're not we're not asking for all of those recommendations, but thoughts on those recommendations individually. If I am thinking about that incorrectly, and anybody has any anybody else has any thoughts on that, please um, let me know. Ms. Harvey. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, the equity committee needs to review the the policy in its totality with the recommended um, changes uh, to, to determine if there is, you know, a substantive change that is not in alignment or more aligned uh, with the intent of 0100. And so I think it's just a matter of looking at it in its totality with the recommendations. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. I do also think that it's helpful that we have um, Ms. Frempong on both committees because she can um, she can uh, discuss our, you know, reference our discussion here. Um, and I think her opinion is valuable as far as how we should uh, send this back to um, the equity committee. Um, Ms. Hen, I see your hands raised. Thank you. Um, so I guess I'm not still not understanding the motion on the floor then. So is the motion to send the version back to equity with the changes that have been made so that it's their review equity is reviewing it in its entirety with the revisions in its entirety Cor correct okay plus miss howie's revision that that we will have captured um that she changed. Yes. Of... Yes. Uh, okay. okay so versus, um, I'm going to go ahead and state my motion then. again because I don't think we I don't think we went past that first part. So um, I'm going to invite a motion to return policy 0100 as presented to PRC today back to the Equity Committee for review along with recommended changes proposed by uh, the Policy Review Committee. Do I have a second? Second, Stileski. Um, okay, and anyone opposed? Okay, seeing none, policy 0100 will be returned to the Equity Committee along with um, recommendations from PRC for further review. Thank you, board members. Let me just get back to my script here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. OK, that was our last business item. So the next item is Committee General Good and Welfare. The floor is now open to members of the committee to discuss issues of concern. I must emphasize that this is not the time to conduct business as there has not been notice provided as required by the Opens Meeting Act. Any further discussion? OK, seeing none, the next meeting of the Policy Review Committee is scheduled for Monday, December 9th at 4.30 p.m. because. Oh, Ms. Sorry. Humphrey? Yes, Ms. Seleski. I'm I'm sorry for interrupting. That's okay. I, I That's just, okay. Just before we concluded, I just was wondering, since um, policy 0100 is going to go back to the equity committee, and I see Mr. Handy is on, um, you know, on our meeting today, and mm -hmm. several of us did want some guidance and, you know, just professional structure for the phrase regarding the political identity. I'm just wondering if specifically... Um, perhaps Mr. Handy could bring some some thoughts on that when the equity committee meets to discuss that. I'm sure he was planning on doing so, but I just thought since we were all together. That you will make that request. Yes. OK, thank you, Mr. Stileski. Ms. Pumphrey, may I respond? Yes, of course. All right. So thank you, Ms. Stileski, for the recommendation. Uh, you are correct. I was preparing to do that and I will most certainly uh, make sure that happens when the committee comes back together. Thank you, Mr. Handy. Thank you. I figured you would, but just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Sometimes I move too quickly and I miss people, so I'm asking again, I apologize. 
OK, the next meeting of the policy review committee is scheduled for Monday, December 9th at 430 PM. Because there is no further business, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good, good night. Have a good evening. Good night. Thank you. Good night.